We're now going to talk about how this information is transmitted on the wire and through the network in an, an AI cluster. So we're, we're going to revisit our friend uh, RDMA, Remote Direct Memory Access, right? We talked about how this is a way for uh, two systems to exchange information directly from the memory pools with very high efficiency, avoiding the CPU latency going straight from memory to NIC across the wire and back into memory. It's how we get those efficiencies transmitting those massive volumes of information in the, the training context, and it's how we get the latency guarantees when we're in the inference context. So RDMA is a protocol which, uh, unlike Ethernet or IP, has very large uh, sizes of information. So in the Ethernet, of course, we have 1500 byte frames, Jumbo 9000. Uh, RDMA can have 8,000, 16,000, 32,000, or even more size blocks of information. And this RDMA frame will have some you know, descriptors and metadata in it, just like anything else, and a massive amount of effectively uh, that memory, the copy of the memory that's being transmitted. So uh, RDMA was developed many decades ago and used in the supercomputing computing domain. So think weather modeling, nuclear stockpiling, all of these supercomputing applications. And it was designed for a lossless transport. So when an RDMA uh, set of information, when a block went into the network, it was expected that it would be received in its entirety with no problem on the other side. And so in that way, the, the, the sending station could alleviate itself of any responsibility of retransmissions or windowing, the, the things that we're familiar with in uh, TCP. So that network originally for RDMA was InfiniBand. And you may have come across InfiniBand in your studies. And it is a technology which still exists today. It's still very popular within the uh, AI cluster deployment community. And InfiniBand is a technology which can make those guarantees. It looks a lot like it, it looks a lot like uh, Ethernet in some ways. It uses some of the same optics. Some of the switch dimensions are the same, but uh, it does have a different system of granting credits so that sending stations know that the bandwidth is guaranteed from end to end, and it has the ability to guarantee the reception on the other side. So a very robust set of technologies which allow RDMA to perform. Uh, very well over this InfiniBand network. Now, the challenges with InfiniBand are, uh, there's a couple of them. So first of all, it's not a converged network. So it cannot run uh, IP applications and, and serve storage and email and all these other pieces that are using IP as a protocol. So it's not a converged network. It's dedicated to that backend network and its only use would be the RDMA applications that are going back and forth between the GPUs. So that's number one. Number two, uh, InfiniBand has a very limited ecosystem. So it's actually owned by NVIDIA. And anyone who makes InfiniBand equipment, of course, must license that technology from NVIDIA. And so therefore, the ecosystem is smaller, leading to uh, less pricing leverage and unit economics on InfiniBand networks. Now, again, they're highly performant. There's some positives. But the downside is that when you create an InfiniBand network, you are creating a dip different operational domain, a different operational infrastructure. If you want to use the same technology for front end and back end because you have operational expertise around Ethernet, then Ethernet is going to be the better choice for you. In addition to the robust Ethernet ecosystem, which gives you much better leverage in terms of product selection as well as uh, unit cost of uh, your devices. So if we take a look at RDMA and InfiniBand, and, and by the way, InfiniBand ha has some of the same hallmarks, a sender, a receiver. There's, there's some of the same networking concepts which live in InfiniBand. Um, it, it became clear that we wanted to leverage RDMA and InfiniBand ideas, but use Ethernet converged infrastructure to do so. And so a standard was developed called RDMA over converged Ethernet. So RDMA over converged Ethernet essentially takes an RDMA frame with InfiniBand information in front of it, that source dest and some of the, the other um, metadata, if you will, inside of an InfiniBand domain, and packages it inside of an Ethernet frame. So you can take a look at an Ethernet frame. There's a method for chopping up this block into smaller pieces so that it fits on the Ethernet wire. You have your source dest for Ethernet. You have your source and dest for InfiniBand, which is called a QPair and then you have the actual RDMA data inside. So this is highly effective in leveraging Ethernet networks for uh, RDMA InfiniBand information. 
Now, of course, we can't make the same guarantees about traffic loss that InfiniBand can make. We know that in a typical Ethernet network, there is going to be packet loss, either because a fiber is going bad or because there's some sort of impairment in the network. And so we still have a problem here with this large block of information, which is expecting to be transmitted and received in its entirety. We could have a piece of that information be dropped because it's been chopped up and placed into these Ethernet frames. In that case, RDMA, uh, unfortunately, has to request the entire block to be retransmitted again. We try to avoid that. That's where a lot of the uh, techniques using congestion control, which we'll talk about shortly, are, are put into place to make sure that we are mitigating any packet drops in the network and therefore any impaired blocks as they transit the entire network. So the first generation of Rocky was RDMA over converged Ethernet. It only provided a method for doing so over an Ethernet frame. We then advanced that standard to RDMA over converged Ethernet Rocky V2, which is what we operate with today. This is over IP. And so using an IP frame, which we can now route, we can now have, do, do all of the special things we can do with, uh, with IP and IP protocols, we now have a frame that looks like we have, our, we have our IP source and destined information metadata, we have our Ethernet source desk, we have a Q pair for InfiniBand, and we have our RDMA data. So it looks a little complex, but what it does give us is tremendous adaptability in being able to route and switch these frames and, and packets all over the network. So Rocky V2 is, uh, with RDMA, with InfiniBand information over Rocky V2 is the uh, sort of the standard way, if you're building an Ethernet backend, the standard way to pass traffic information from one station to another in the training context or the inference context that I talked about before. Now, this is the lion's share of the market, right? Not 90 plus percent of people are using this to build their AI networks today. They're either using InfiniBand in a full stack from NVIDIA or they're using Rocky V2 with uh, the converged infrastructure front and back. Uh, but that's not to say that other folks are not trying to make advancements here. And in a future session, we'll talk about uh, the, what's happening with some of the standards groups with, uh, in the AI context, one of which is called Ultra Ethernet. So the Ultra Ethernet Consortium is a group that Nokia is uh, actively involved with and are developing a set of standards which will replace a lot of this going forward with multi-vendor agreed to standards that we can all implement in order to provide some advantages, not only in the performance and the capabilities of all of this stack of technologies, but to extend the technologies, add things like security and instrumentation that were not there before, which allow us to build better networks. Um, interestingly, just uh, earlier this week as I'm recording this, uh, we talked about Elon Musk and his uh, XAI and uh, Tesla initiatives with AI. They've announced and are submitting to be a standard um, something called TTPOE. So this is Tesla Transport Protocol over Ethernet. And what this is is effectively a way to uh, make this section even more efficient. So they're taking what I would assume is RDMA and placing it in inside their own frame format, which they have programmed their devices to understand and create efficiencies by getting rid of some of the pieces here, which are not as performant as they'd like them to be. So all this is to say that there are lots of research activities, both within private industry, as well as within the standards groups, to, uh, to, to really improve upon this communication stack that we have and create the highest possible performance out of AI networks that we're building.